Hi, I'm Joy Cherick and welcome to my channel. Today I'm talking about what I wish I had known before I started homeschooling. And we've been on this journey for quite a while now, about 10 years, because we knew early on that we were going to homeschool. And now we have four students in our homeschool plus a baby and a toddler. So I'm gonna share my journey with you and a, kind of some fun things that we've fallen into and lessons learned in a fun way, but also some lessons that I've learned the hard way. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to get more videos about nature study, Charlotte Mason homeschooling and family life. So the first thing that I wish I would have known before starting to homeschool is that each student will actually go through each grade in their own way. Now, this is something that I struggled with and kind of learned the hard way because when my first one went through first grade, then my next one was coming up, I was trying to replicate what the first child did with the second child. But the problem with that method is that, well, the first child is going to do it in their own way and with their own strengths, with their own weaknesses, with their own preferences, and also just their own interests. So when I had my second child coming up, I had a girl first and then a boy next. I mean, it, we were just, I was starting over and really had to adjust my expectations and my even some of my curriculum for his skills, interests, abilities, and also where we were as a family. So that was something that I wish I would have understood a little bit more before getting started and not trying to duplicate year over year and each child getting the same experience, almost like the conveyor belt method that the school does. Instead, we're a living, thriving family and our family changes. We expand and we contract. We have, you know, we introduced a baby last year and that changed how each child is experiencing that grade level. And we also have different opportunities that come up. One year we um, closed a business and then moved to a different state for six months. So each child is getting to have that year be its own experience. The next thing that I, this is the second one, the second one that I wish I would have known before we started homeschooling was that the curriculum is not my master and it is simply there to help guide me and show me kind of the general direction that we should be going. I think at first it's good to follow a more structured plan because we're learning and the curriculum kind of helps us learn. But as we grow and change and get more comfortable, what I found is that I have to Kind of remove certain elements from the curriculum if it makes me too stressed or if it causes too much friction within our family or maybe I'm just not able to do all the little things during a certain season. So being able to forgive and or just dismiss those things and say, well, those are the things that I'm not able to do right now. You curriculum are not my master. And to then say it's a guide and it's there to help and support me, again, especially during a baby year or as I mentioned, like when we were going through kind of a difficult family time and we needed to just do the bare bones for a little while. And then I wouldn't, I didn't feel as behind once I made the choice to say, well, I'm just going to do what I can do. And, you know, I'm not a slave to this curriculum that we chose. So the third thing that I wished I would have known before we started homeschooling was that, or remembered or known, I guess, mom is a person. 
I get to be considered when we are looking at what math curriculum we're going to choose and which books we're going to study or what biography we might decide. Not that I'm the only person to be considered, but I think it's really, really easy to become more child focused and not take our own interests, abilities, and strengths into consideration. And that actually means maybe we <gasps> hire someone to help us in an area of weakness, or perhaps we ask for help from family. So what that looks like for us this year has been my mother is a talented artist and really loves kind of just all the liberal arts basically. So she has, we've worked out a thing where every other week she gets a different group of kids and she teaches them art and some drawing and some painting because I have six children and the mess of the painting with all the little ones bothers me and I'm just not able to get that done. So that has been a real blessing to be able to ask for help and then see the blessing that is to my children to be able to build that relationship with their grandmother and to also be able to learn something that I'm just not, I don't have the capacity to teach them at this time. So another area that I have taken myself into consideration is just self-care as far as the schedule goes. You can take a look at our morning routine and see that uh, I have a video, I'll link it below. Um, you can see that I really love a morning walk. And that was one element of our morning that I decided needed to be there for my health. I need to get outside. It's actually good for everyone for us to do that regularly. But that was something that there is some pushback for my children to do that regularly. So, well, sometimes. So I just really made sure, you know what, guys, I need a walk. This is really important for mom to get out for 20 minutes and, you know, get my steps in or whatever, mostly just getting outside and enjoying nature. So the bottom line is for number three, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So just making sure that I'm taking care of myself so that I can be healthy, happy, and peaceful to be able to help my children. Okay, so number four, the thing that I really wished I would have known before starting to homeschool was community. Now, everybody talks about socialization and how do you do that and what does that look like? Um, but it is really important and it's something that I think the homeschooling mother needs to be or gets the opportunity to be more intentional with. And to understand that some families and most families in America right now are pretty isolated. So if somebody's not calling you or somebody's not reaching out, they're probably busy with their own little rhythm, but they also are probably feeling isolated or lonely in some way. As another aspect of this is that I have found for myself, and I, I don't know if this is a personality thing or not, but I have just found if I have one good friend who is kind of in a similar season, has a similar size family as me, um, that that really helps me kind of get through and have a person I can call and talk to, but it needs to be somebody in real life. I know a lot of times, I have felt, I've been in seasons where I felt frustrated that, oh, I didn't have this group of people and, oh, I don't have my girls um, group or whatever. But the reality is, you know, it's hard to cultivate those things in our culture if you're not in sports at a school, you know, a member of a thriving church, you know, all these different things kind of need to be overlapping in order for the girls group to really be uh, sustainable. So just knowing that one friend can really be a huge blessing and kind of looking around and saying, okay, who is the one person that the Lord has put in my life? Um, I wish I would have acknowledged or known that or um, understood just the loneliness that can come 
with being a homeschooling mother and my own agency to be able to solve that problem for myself and for my family. Okay, so my fifth and last thing that I wished I would have known before I started homeschooling is that her thriving will not look like my surviving. And what I mean by that is right now I'm shooting a YouTube video and I'm talking about how I have six children and you're going, I can't even get the laundry done right now or meals are not happening consistently. Well, how is she even doing this? But I think we have to remember each of us are in different seasons and different stages. And like I was talking to a friend the other day and she's pregnant and she's just doing so great. And I was just going, that is not my experience of pregnancy. Pregnancy, I was laid out and, you know, couldn't leave my house for six months. So um, just understanding that we are, or I am in the place where the Lord has put me and we each are experiencing today a little bit differently. So if you see someone who's thriving and you know, seems to be doing all the things and you're just eking along and you're comparing yourself to her, it's not really a fair comparison to yourself because, you know, maybe your husband just lost his job or maybe you're having um, difficulty with your, uh, some health problems in your family or, you know, however many number of things that are going on that make us just need to put it into low gear serve our kids peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and say, you know what? It's going to be okay. We're going to make it through. Um, But I think that that comparison steals our joy and it can really um, make us not be grateful to the blessings and gifts that the Lord is giving us right now, even if we're just holding on um, by the tips of our fingers, you know, to the, to the day. So I have a question for you, and I'd love for you to let me know in the comments. Have you been homeschooling for a while, or are you just getting started? And if you've been at it for a while, what do you recommend, or is the thing that you wished you would have known uh, before you started homeschooling? If you can leave a comment, and we can all learn from one another below, that would be great. Uh, Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.